run up to some damn to feed her little children. And some boys in water try to expand. But no seeds. And it's so precious until she divides the grains of rice to each child. Yet they haven't revived. Yet they're dying for their testimony. Come on, come on. I doubt that the video was tonight. Someone was walking here with a pump shotgun. Mm -hmm. Knocked the blast the chair out three or four. Come on. And shoot somebody's leg off. Mm -hmm. And turn around and say, I'm giving y'all two minutes uh -huh. to deny Jesus and get out or stay here and die. Uh -huh. I wonder how many people left. Come on now. Those right. people are dying. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Yes, they're, they they're refusing to give up their faith. Yes, they Come on. They're being mourning right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're so blessed. Amen. We're so blessed to have revivals. Yes. Most of them places, they have to hide. They'll start coming to church right. two days ahead of time right. where they won't be noticed. Right. Right. One trickle in, another trickle in. Right. Wait, just now, church. And they'll trickle out the same way. Uh -huh. Because to name the name of Jesus means death. death. Uh -huh. I wonder tonight. You think you, you may think we're above that in this country, but we're headed to that right now. Right now, it's a shame to say the name of Jesus in public. That's right. People look like they're getting mad. You can say Booty, you can say Mohammed, you can say God, because there's many gods. But you got to distinct who God is. Yeah. There's a lot of God. God's me. Yeah. But thank you for one true in living. Yeah. And through his name, demons are true. Yeah. Devils know who Jesus is. Yeah. The Bible team said, devils fear and tremble at one God. Not three gods. There's one The Bible said all the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelt in Christ. Yes. Yes. See, in this world, there's certain places you didn't, you can't go and say what I'm saying. That's right. Come on, boy. They'll throw you out so quick. You know why? Because it's against their doctrine, yes. against their belief, but it's still the Bible. Yes, it is. What I'm quoting you, I can read it to you. Yes. Yes. All right. All the fullness of the Godhead by the dwelt in Christ. Right. Yeah. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Have it. Satisfied. Yeah. Said, so we're all confused. You tell us all this. Said, show us the Father. Yeah. Let us see it. Right. He said, Philip. Oh, <laughs> Philip. Yeah. Have I been so long time with you? And thou hast not known me. Oh. Philip, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That's all Jesus was about. Yes, Jesus was a man. But in that man was God. The Bible said, God in Christ and Christ in you. What about that part? Oh, we want that part, but we don't want the other part. Uh -huh. We want Christ to be in us, but we don't want to accept that God is in Christ. There's one God. Jesus was a man, born of a virgin. He didn't have an earthly father. God was his father. But he come and brought all the fullness. Go ahead. He come in the fullness. He come yeah. and gave us yeah. all of God. Woo. Nobody else. Moses gave us part. Elijah gave us part. Yeah. Jeremiah gave us part. Yeah. All these men give us parts. They were only types and shadows. And it all pointed to one. He who demons true. Uh -huh. Jesus. Yeah. God. God. Thank you, 
Come on. It's Jesus. Yes. Yes. He said in the book of Revelation. Tom said, I'm Alpha. I'm Omega. Ain't nothing before me, and there ain't going to be nothing after me. What Alpha and Omega mean? I'm the first, and I'm the last. Yes. I'm the first and I'm the last. Come on. There's no other God. There's no other Savior. Go ahead. But Jesus. Jesus. Right on that set. Come said, I'm He. He made it a little plainer. Still, if he'd have left it off there, it would have still left, but he made it plain as it ran down in, in Revelations. Right. He said, I'm he. Come on. He said, I'm going to make it plain. I'm he that was dead. Right. I'm the one that died on the cross. Yeah. John, right. I'm going to write this. Mm. I'm the one that died on the cross. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Come on. He's alive tonight. He's not dead. I say he's not dead. He's alive. And some of you tonight is still stumbling over this. He said they stumbled at the word. They stumbled at the word of God. When receiving it, it was written. But it's true. But see, that, that's what this old layer this city does. It separates everybody. It divides. You know, there ain't no churches together anymore. Even churches both believe the same thing. They don't, they don't get together. The devil has masterminded the plan to about divide everybody. Look at this community tonight. Come on. Right. Oh, every, you, this time of the year, all these 35 or so years, we had these camp meetings here. All the pastors in this area would be in these meetings. Uh -huh. Reaching out to God. Right. Where that tonight? Think about it. Where that tonight? They ain't even got her door. Come on, true. Come on. True. You know why? The word don't change. That's right. Come on. The word don't change. If I'd have changed when they changed, they'd all be here. But I didn't change when they changed. I didn't go back to the world. I didn't give up. Yes, it's been a battle. But I'd rather fight for the truth. And I'd, hit, I'd let the lie hook me. The world needs something that's going to deliver them. And a part in the fish fry. And a dinner ain't going to deliver this generation. Bowling team and a ball team. Oh, hey. Come on. Ain't gonna cast out no devils. No. See, the devils got everybody busy. The churches are busy with programs. Oh, they think that's what God is now. Oh, Keep everybody busy doing something. Doing what? Oh, you can get busy doing a lot of stuff. Oh, but we need to get busy seeking God. Get out in the street knocking on doors. Tell them about Jesus. Praying and fasting. Standing in the camp of this lost, drug-infested, homosexual generation. It ain't on in the streets. It's in the school. It's in the pulpit. It's in the choir. It's on the beacon board. And the bad part about it, they haven't accepted it that they can't do nothing about it no more. Oh, I'm 
may not change them, but I sure don't have to have no part of it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It's everywhere. This is the judges. This is the lawyers. That's why all these cases is so crazy. In court. That's why I'm storing cases and, and the verdict is, my God, how'd they get that? It's the spirit they are. They're promoting what they are. They ain't just doing it lying down. They ain't taking it lying down. They're giving themselves to it. But the church, at the same time, the devil's wide open. The church is playing around. Let our head in the lilas lap. Thinking, there ain't gonna be no bad end. I'm telling you, you keep on following the world. There ain't nothing good coming for you. All right. All right. All right. Come on. Somewhere you gotta make a choice. Joshua said, choose you this day who you gonna serve. For me and my house. I don't know what the rest of y'all are going to do. Come on. Hey. Except for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We need God's blessings. There's a storm coming. There's plagues coming. The mark of the beast is upon us. And no, we ain't going to be ratchet out. We're not going to be gone. That's a cop out. That's the cop out for the preachers that don't want to preach the truth. Those that don't preach the truth ain't got nothing else to tell them. It's a cop out. It's a lie. There ain't no scripture for it. You can't show me none, but I can show you where the church was here. He said, cry out. Yes. And do what? Yes. Don't you spare that old flesh. Lift right. up your voice like a trumpet. Yes. The day of sparing flesh is over. Yes. You may find you another church. But you ain't gonna ever get away from the word of God. It'll hunt you down. It'll go to your house. If you never come back, sit on it. It'll come home. It'll interrupt your life. You only escape God's judgment because you say, I don't have to sit back and be talked to like that. I don't have to listen to that. No, you sure don't. But I do tell you what you got to do. You got to die. You got to stand before this God I'm telling you about this pure and holy and sanctified. He hates sin. He don't hate the sinner. He hates sin. He don't even hate the homosexual. He hates homosexuality. He hates the sin. He'll save any man. He that come to me, I'll no wise cast him out. But he did say, be not deceived. God is not mocked. You don't mock God and get by with it. What are you talking about, Mom? I'm talking about what I'm preaching right now. Yeah. To know the truth and walk on faith from it and think you can not obey the word of God and still get the blessings of God, you're mocking God. You're telling God, I don't have to listen to you. I'm going to heaven anyhow. No, you won't. No, you won't. I'm going to get the blessings anyhow. So and so prophesied to me, I was blessed. You ain't blessed if you don't have no obedience. I don't care who told you you were best. You're not best. You're just on bar time. Till the hammer comes down on you. Go 
hand. Well, I know they ain't, he ain't really appreciate it, but I'm just staying there. You are? Come on. You better leap and run. If the holler at you on the way back, your sound gone. Don't even look back. Run and don't look back. No, I tell you what, a lot of folks got bosses. They can't do no more than the bosses. Uh -oh. The wife is the boss. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Tell it. Hallelujah. You can't go to the bathroom unless there's the boss. I know I'm not talking to everybody, but I'm talking to somebody. Jesus. Man, get up, pull your britches on, buckle them down. Put your combat boots on and tell the devil he's got to go. You're not ruling over me. You're not sending my soul to hell. I'm not trying to please flesh. I'm gonna please God. Come on. He ain't guilty, I ain't talking to you. You know why I'm talking to you. You know what I'm talking to. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to get you not to let the flesh control. Jesus died for your sin. Yeah, come on. Go ahead. You gotta serve him. Come on. You got a lot of preachers. They're not controlled by God. They're controlled by somebody. Yeah. All it does is swell up a little bit and fold their arms. It changes the message. Uh -huh. <laughs> If I was you, if I had to help somebody blindfold me before I come out, I'd leave me to the pulpit. I'd let the word do it. I'd let the hammer down. I'd preach the word. I'd be in season, out of season. I'd reprove, rebuke, exhort, but our own suffering doctrine for the time will come. They will not endure sound doctrine. But after the whole lust shall the heat that themselves teach you. Have an itch here. Yeah. Oh, that will turn from the truth. Yeah. And turn to faith. What I'm really saying is, Paul said, I speak concerning a man and his wife, but said, what I'm really getting over to you is concerning Christ in the church. Amen. Amen. I'm using that verse. But he said, you, you're supposed to love your wife you, as yourself. No man hates his own flesh. That's right. You let some old church, some old church religion control you. You know, people can't even go in fellowship and go to revivals no more. Pastors won't let them. You get beat over the head when you get back. Control. Control like that is not the spirit of God. That's witchcraft. That's flesh control. We don't need flesh control. We need Holy Ghost control. We need to be led by the spirit. Full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. It's time for the church to rise. Jesus said, if any man would come after me. He said, if you're going to come after me, he said, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Go ahead, preacher. He commanded us to follow him. Not religion. True sample of the religion was the Pharisees and the Sadducees that hated him. They called him a devil. And they didn't even agree. 
One believed in angels and resurrection, other than death. Come on. Yeah. About like this generation. They all believe something different, some of the wildest old doctrine. But you know what they do? When the truth stands up, they all come together to fight it. They suddenly fall in love with one another. That's what the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians did. They didn't even like each other. But when Jesus come forth, they all proved what they was. They were all of the devil because they come together and fought Jesus. And when you fight Jesus, Jesus don't fight Jesus. Jesus don't hate the word. Well, I got the Holy Ghost. If you hate the Word, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost and the Word is one. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. You don't hate the truth and say, I got the Holy Ghost. You don't have no Holy Ghost. You got something else, but you don't have the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying you understand everything, but you ain't gonna you gonna sit back and pray because you feel something good and true about it. Come on. Come on. That been, I ain't understood everything in my life coming up as a minister, but I knew not to touch it. I said there's something something come right about this. I don't understand it. So I never back up and leave it alone. And the truth will prove itself. The word of God will prove itself. It's never wrong. We might be wrong, but the word of God's always right. You know what he'll do? He'll correct us and get us right. God will give a word in due season. And Peter spoke about the present truth. There's a truth, but there's a truth for tonight. All the Bible's right, but all the Bible ain't for here tonight. There's a present truth. That's something that God wants to get over to us tonight. He's trying to penetrate this old lukewarm. Lay it over sin. No prayer. No fasting. No burden. I read where that man never went to hollow log. Talking about a praying man. Woman wrote him a letter, his organ play. He played until he couldn't play. He, back then you had to pump him organ. Uh -huh. You had to work to be organ. <laughs> Kept playing, he got so weak, he had to have somebody get up there with him and pump it, but he still played. Oh. No, brother, I don't know how to play, but I know how to pump. You play and I'll pump. <laughs> Handles, that's determined. That's how determined we ought to be. If you ain't got the strength enough to pump, so I'll play it if you'll just pump. He got a letter and his wife told him, said, Brother so and so, get his name, I said, Now you get this letter, hit in the grave. He died. The doctor done told us, don't call him no more. He nothing else he can do. He shut everything down, went to the dark room. Stayed on his face the first time. Prostate. 11 hours. Mm. Got up and come back and stayed another nine hours. On his face. He saw a vision of him laying on the bed. He said, he just raised up a hand like that. Let it down. Cold and pale. He went back and stayed another. Then he was up to 52 hours on his face. Not coming out of the room. And he went in. Each time he said he had to pray. I thought 
I want God help me. He said, I got to pray till I see that vision. I can't quit praying. And when I see that vision, I know what the outcome is going to be. I can get up. He said, when I see the vision, it releases me. He prayed on to 52 hours and it went into a vision. Before that last 20 some hours, whatever it was, he said he knew when he saw the hand raise up, he was closer to the answer. He didn't stop that. He went back on his face. To the end, he went into a vision, saw him sit up on the edge of the bed. Look at yourself. Called his name and said, Oh, what his name he said, You're alive. You're alive. When he went that vision, he got up, wrote another letter, and told him, said, Your husband's going to be all right. Come on. And you're going to die. Just like that vision. He got up and set up. Checked yourself out and see whether your husband was alive. To his screen. And he stood up and walked out on the porch. And his wife almost fainted. <laughs> said, man, lay down you. You're going to die. He sat down and said, I'm a hot. I ain't going to be a part of that. That doctor told me if I fed you, he's going to die. She wouldn't give him a Kept asking, give me something. He looked over and saw a neighbor in the yard. He hollered his name, Angus, or something. Bring me something to eat. The man ran back and got his wife, brought it out, and said, Look, I'm young. Oh, my God, that's him. He's sitting on the porch. He said, Go give me something to eat. My wife won't feed me. She ran and then got him a boiled egg and brought it out. He just boop, 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 just consumed it. <laughs> she went back and got him something else. He consumed that. Got him something else. Got him something else. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it was just, he saw in the vision in two weeks time, he'd be back on the job. In two weeks time, he was back on his job. Why? Because he had a burden. He got on his face, stayed 52 hours. Yeah. I said, God, these spiritual giants makes us look like ants. Oh. Them knows we got the same opportunity yeah. to obey God. And be a spiritual giant in our generation. Well, we can't do it going the wrong way. We got to turn back. You know what he said? If my people, he didn't say the world. He knows the world ain't going to turn. He knows the world ain't going to quit partying and drinking and doping. He knows they ain't going to quit until he does something for the church and the church is going to reach the world. Yeah. David said in Psalm 51, restore. The joy of my salvation. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Yeah. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Right. He went on and said, Then will I teach transgressors yeah. thy ways, and sinners will be converted to you. David said, God, I ain't no shape to do nothing. I need a change before I can do something. That's right, brother. Amen. Right. David said, God, I ain't no shame to do what I need to do. I gotta have you to touch me for I can touch her. Restore me, Lord. Restore my joy, myself. Creating me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Take away my iniquities and my sin. Then will I teach transgressors thy way. And sinners will be converted to you. But God, I'll need you to restore me first. Amen. We need that restoration. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. There's a restoration coming to the church if we'll hear God. Amen. There's a restoration coming to the house.
household of faith if we're willing to turn. Repentance ain't complete until you turn. That's right. Until you give up your way. You know what? When you got saved, you know what? You got desperate. And you're on your knees saying, God save me. Things start running through your mind. You say, no, I don't want that. God save me. Bring it. Oh, God, I don't want nothing. I'm desperate, Lord. I, and you wind up saying, Lord, I'll give up everything. I got a house ready. You got to save me. And when God gets through with you, you clean, you empty it out, and you're in love with Jesus, and your life is transformed, and you're born again. You. you got a new life. You're translating. You know why? You got desperate for God. This generation ain't desperate. We got too many pleasures. Not enough prayer meetings. Not enough prayer meetings. Not enough power. No prayer, no power. No dedication, no power. Come on. You may be satisfied with no power. No. Go ahead. I'm not satisfied to see the church. No power. That's right. Just drifting and drifting and drifting with no direction. Come on. Don't even know who God is in. That's right. All God is to them, church today, is something in the flesh. They started hooping and hollering about when he's supposed to call. We're all going to see this movie. Most of these movies they make now is Antichrist. Right. Don't even tell the story. That's Some right. of the most evil stuff. Come on. That's yeah. the truth. Yes, sir. They twisted it. They done got down to the church now. They done got the world twisted. They done got the world receiving. It's all right. The boy can have a boyfriend or girlfriend and make your choice. No, it ain't your choice. God done made the choice when he made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. The message of the day, you can do what you want to commit adultery, lie, steal, kill. Listen to all kind of world and music, hip hop, and lying dance in the church. That's accepted as the Holy Ghost. Oh yeah. See, they're lying dance in clubs. They hip hop in the hellhole. Yes, they do. These old purple headed rockers rocks. Them spirits is out of hell, but they're rocking in the pulpit. Yeah. And saying it's the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Doing the same old thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> Purple, blue hair. Same music, same spirit, but somehow the preachers are so dead and so blind. They can't see. It ain't God. It's the Antichrist. His kingdom right in the house of God. So true. They started choreography dancing. I told them, I said, Y'all listen to me. I ain't gonna stop that. That's right. And I'm not deaf. Speak to me. You don't have to give me sign language. <laughs> Talk to me, preach to me, sing English to me, sing in the Holy Ghost to me. Tell me about Jesus. Call sin, sin. But don't beat around on the edge and confuse my mind. Talk to sin. Talk to the devil. Get him square behind the eyes. We need prayer meetings, not play meetings. People practice. They used to pray. 
We got prayer. What about prayer and let God take over? Let the Holy Ghost anoint you. When you don't know what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, you just get out there and say, here it is, Lord. It's in your hand. I'm just going to guide. I'm going to put a blindfold on. And you lead me. I'm not going to go over my sight tonight. Lord, you lead me. You lead me by the Spirit. God, I ain't going to go over my eyesight. You lead me. We practice now. Not pray. Back in my old country churches. I remember back in the 70s. They get up other rivers and for service, the men be under the hill. Yeah. Women be back in one of the room. Yeah. And brother, I promise you, time church started, there wouldn't be a devil on that hill. They'd shout for four hours, cast out devils for another two, have another altar call to four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. People getting the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And didn't get up at daylight and go to work. Right. And walk 15, 20 miles to work. Yeah. It wouldn't be a true night revival, a three night like we have. Come on. People's people's attention can't last for over three nights. Oh my God, Jesus. Come on. Go ahead. Six, seven. This time we have six and seven. Three nights. We've had seven weeks right here. Ever not the power of God for it. Ever not the church full. So full to be all up on the platform. Feet. To be in chairs with the feet up there. To be all up here in chairs. I'd have one little bit of space here to preach. Be outside. These rooms would be full. Standing in the yard. Seven solid rooms. I remember once an angel appeared in the service one night down the aisle. And put a horn in my hand. He said, people's lives will be changed forever for seven solid weeks. I anointed people with oil. Some of you may remember. Sinners would come out bawling and squalling, not even calling an altar call. They come up bawling and squalling and throw their hands up. I know them with all. They repent and fall on their knees without being led. The words would just come out. God would gloriously save them. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. It was the work of God. The people was praying. See, if you don't pray, you struggle. You fight. You struggle. But if you pray until you get in the spirit, the Holy Ghost takes over. And it's like a freight train. Hallelujah. It's like a freight train. Yes, it is. People don't pray enough. Get enough power. The hill of mosquitoes. Right now. He's got one. What he said. I read this today. On the end of that. Listen to what he said. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation. Chapter 3. In verse 14. To the angel of the church of Laodicea, write these things, says it, that amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Look like he's got plenty of authority for what he's about to tell you. Look like he's got the credentials that none of us could deny. You know what the world looks at today is credentials. Man degrees. So you got to have a doctor's degree to pass to some church. You're not even have no prayer life. You ain't got to do nothing. Just have a paper. Not even be saved. Not even have the Holy Ghost. Just have that man decree. That's right. That don't give you no power, God. No, it don't. 
God has anointed you. Yes, he does. That's right. Man's approval oh, yeah. ain't God's approval. Oh, yeah. That's right. It's usually when God approves of somebody, nobody else. Ain't many folks like it. Uh -oh. He believe it. That's right. God sent Samuel down to Jesse's house. Saw it backslid. And he sent Samuel down to said, take your horn and go down to Jesse's house and anoint me a king. Come on. Yes. Right. He took his horn, went down there. The first thing he saw was that elder brother, big tall, and right. he looked like a king. He had got that oil, and God said, stop. <laughs> said, he ain't the one. <laughs> said, man looks on the outer right. Right. appearance, but God looks at the heart. He said his heart ain't what I want. He went to the other, went to the other, went to all of his brothers. And Samuel looked around and said, don't you have another? Come on. God sent me here. I don't understand what's going on here. Yes, mm -hmm. said, well, uh, yeah, I got another. But he's just a little shepherd boy out there minding the sheep. Samuel said, we ain't going to set till you go get him. That's Stand right. That's right. Yeah. That old Rudy Fake boy come and skip him. Come on. You look, God said that's him. Put the horn on his head. That's him. See what they didn't know. God was done getting him ready. See, God's getting people ready that we don't even know about. We don't know everything God's doing. God don't tell us everything he's doing in this kingdom. He's getting people ready. We don't even know their name. We don't even know where they live. You know what they're doing tonight? They're crying, God, you. Oh, Lord, please, you. Hungry and thirsty. After God. Little David come up there. What? What? They didn't know God was getting ready. Out there minding them sheep. Come on. Later on down the line, he said, I was minding the sheep. And said, A bear come out, out there one day, grabbed one of my father's lambs. And said, I slew that bear with my bare hands and delivered that lamb. He said, Another time. Yes. I was out there minding them sheep. And said, A lion grabbed one of them lambs. I ran into him and took it. Slew that lion with my bare hands. Deliver that man. That's when you said that I'm circumcised Philistine. Go lie is no more in my hands. And that bad in life. You know what he was saying? You know man can't kill a bad. You know man can't stand up against a lion. But the same God that gave me power to face that bear and lion and deliver them lambs and, and, and kill him. That giant up here on him. That lion on that mountain. That bear on that mountain. I'm going to slay him today. I'm going to deliver God's people from his hand. Out of his paw. Out of his teeth. He poured it all on him. And immediately see God done pull the spirit. He went out there and was supposed to wait on Samuel to make a sacrifice. He got out there and went away. Jumped ahead. Oh, Samuel was a little late and God did that purpose. He tried you. He knows God will try you. Yes, he will. see whether you'll be obedient no matter what to come from. No matter what people think about you. God will put you in a test and see whether you'll stand. Now that's a man Brother Revival, Pastor, come down and sit down. Brother, I know you've been preaching and we like it, but said the, the doctor and his wife is up to the night. You won't have to take it easy. Yeah. So they all not told me. Said he rest. Yeah. Said he got up there and tried to do something with that service and just wouldn't go nowhere. Wouldn't get off the ground. Couldn't even get the pump prime. Couldn't even get his own pump prime, let on the people. Once he 
run down that aisle, looked at that doctor, and said, if you don't repent, you're going to hell, and you too, wife. If you don't repent, you're going to hell. I said, both of them broke and started crying, fell down and run to the altar and hit their knees, and both got saved. Sometimes we draw up, oh, so and so is here. Why are you preaching like that? God knows who's here. He knew who's going to be here. We want everything to be just right where, where somebody can get saved. God can save a person wherever they at, no matter what you preach. He's the one that saved you. I, I want to get my children there where there's a good service and get saved. You just got to bring them to church and believe God. Let God handle that. Let God save them. What touches people may not be what you think is going to get to it. But God knows what to dig down in their heart and wake them up and shake them and let them see the error of their ways. What touches people ain't what you think. You want them to take it easy. Take it easy. But sometimes taking it easy ain't going to touch for them. Look where it's got us. Look what taking it easy has got us to. Anything going on. Everything, anything. House of God ain't sacred no more. That's right. You have to take a stand somewhere. Wow. I don't understand. Folks come out of the streets. Sinners, they may come in looking any kind of way. Smelling any kind of way. The Bible said he that went to souls is wise. Yes, sir. But he didn't pick that old backslid spirit no, in Israel. That's right. He draw the line and said, this is the way it is. You let down before it's over. There he's sitting on the front row with hot pants. Go ahead, sir. That's right. Go ahead. Come on. No fear, God. No fear. Fear don't. Fear ain't lost in one day. It comes through the letdown of this place right here. That's right. Come on. Come on. That's exactly right. When the preacher wants to be accepted, more he wants to see people saved. I know this is Greek. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. He said, is he here? Come on. I'm not sending you to a people of strange language. Uh -huh. He said, I'm sending you to a people to understand what you're saying. He said, they understand, but they just want to, don't want to do it. He said, no doubt, if I had sent them to another people, they'd have heard. They would have heard the word. And they'd have repented. Amen. He said, you tell them what they hear of what they fall back. He said, there are no before it's over. And then a prophet among them. He said, that come on, give my people which are called by my name, you notice he said, humble himself. Yes, he did. You've got to humble yourself. You want to change, the first thing is you've got to humble yourself and recognize and know God, we got to have help. Doctors don't know what to do no more. They're acting like they know. The professionals out here in the world they're putting up a front. They're confused behind the doors. The government's confused behind the doors. They're saying the only way out for humanity, unless he goes his state, is to all come together. And all the world will be under one government. Right. Under one leader. Right now they're trying to nationalize 
the police force. Come on. That's right. Come out putting cameras on all policemen. Right. Yeah. What they say. They ain't gonna stop that, folks. No. Right. Oh, it's a good thing. Well, they put him in the streets first. Right. You would be young and they got your own camera, you go to jail. Right. They got him in the parking lot. They got him everywhere. Right. Fact, you can go home and get on your computer yes, and look straight at your house That's right. and know who's in your parking lot. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Well, your lights on. Talking about one man, he pulled it up. Told his wife, said, you didn't cut the porch light off. She said, right. yes, I did. Said, no, you didn't. She went down and said, how did you know? Said, I'm looking at it. There ain't no prophet said no more. No, said, they ain't stopping there, folks. The government's got its eyes on you. They know every move you make. Yeah. It's been progressing a little bit more and more. And every time people get in old sleep position, they call it a good thing. Oh, they're going to keep the eyes on the policeman. What about the criminals? Put cameras on the thieves. Put cameras on the dope pushers. Yeah, we know we got bad policemen just like we got bad preachers. Yeah. Everybody ain't bad. That's right. That's right. It's a ploy of the devil. It's, 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 it's the government behind all this. And the people think it's, oh, it's just the outcry of the people. But they already got all this stuff planned. They're fooling you. It's already on paper what they're going to do. They're just going by the paper. Yeah. And it's all leading to the mark of the beast. Yes, but you can't buy or sell. Unless you've got the mark of the beast in the palm of your hand or your forehead. Right. And people call it a good thing. And even people now that's supposed to be awake, I hear them talk and I think, you're, you're asleep. Right. You want a camera on you on your job? You want a camera on you? Catch you on your job? Come on. That's the next thing. They got some putting a camera on the job. They ain't going to stop that. Next thing is going to be a demand to put him in every room in your house. In fact, you already got one in most rooms. That television they got Samsung come out uh, right 12 years ago. That was the first one. Yeah. They can turn that booger on That's and watch you. Yes, sir. It's a fact. Yes, sir. It's a proven fact. Right. They can turn it on and turn it off. Right. Government has already got its eyes on you. They can use it for advertisement. See what you eat, what you drink. They, they do that. Put it in the computer. And, and use it for, to, to know what people want. Yeah. Your privacy yeah. is gone, but yet people still call it. Uh -huh. Tell you what's going to cause a policeman to do. When you call him, he's going to go so slow. Yeah. Uh, he ain't going to get to you in time. And I can't say I blame him. Because he's the one going to jail. The criminal gets by. True. Go ahead, Criminal in this generation, it turns it around. It's got more rights than the people that's doing right. That's right. They look out more for the criminals. The do decent people that don't believe in living like that. Right. But it's all a point to turn it around until people get so until they accept anything. Here's going to end the Christ going to step out. Right. Right now, the Pope, well, James Robinson, the, the, the TBN, and Kenneth Copeland, all these preachers are meeting with the Pope. Uh -huh. right. They're pledging their allegiance back to the Catholic Church. Right. The heart, the mother heart. 
But they're going on like, Come on. you know what they call? Oh, the poor.